Look at that and more we have with us this morning Brigadier General John Agim, who is the defense spokesperson. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. I'm just wondering, I mean, you must be given at least a little sigh of relief, even though, I mean, not all the girls are back, but at least a sizable number of them have returned uh, to Dapchi. Questions, however, linger as to how that happened in the very first instance. Have you been able to conduct any investigations into how that happened? Well, the, as a matter of fact, we are all happy that the girls are, some of them are back. Um, let me say that the issue of investigation, the federal government have, uh, has established a committee to find out what happened before, during, and after the abduction, and that committee is still working. Is the military conducting, is the defense uh, the headquarters conducting any independent investigation, internal investigations by itself? Yes, what, whatever thing we are doing is just to enhance our, um, our operation. So what all of us are waiting for is the, the, the committee that is established by National Security Advisor. Yes. I, I just want us to go back a little. I mean, you have heard different allegations. A, two, a day before the Daptry girls were released, you, you saw the uh, allegations of Amnesty International saying that, uh, you know, the military did not do enough in ensuring that the Daptry incident never happened in the very first instance. The military, of course, has reacted to it. But then there are questions as to how that happened. I mean, there was no security presence. People talked about how phone calls were made hours prior to uh, the, uh, the abduction of the girls. There was no response. In some instances, we understand that even the local police, their lines were switched off and nobody could reach them. What precisely happened, I mean, so far to, uh, to, to, to allow the abduction of the girls in the first instance? Well, I, I think um, Amnesty International, they take advantage of whenever we have security situation, whenever there are gaps and something happens, they take advantage of it. And over the years, we found out that the intention is to harm Nigeria. And that is why I want everybody to understand that the fight in the north, northeast and other part of the country is not the fight between the Nigerian military and Boko Haram or any other person. It's a fight between Nigeria and Boko Haram and the bad people in our, in our midst. Well, well, General, now, in fairness to Amnesty International, the questions that they have raised, the information, some of the information that they put out in their statement is already common knowledge. Some of the questions that they are asking are questions that Nigerians are asking legitimately. The Northeast is currently still being, uh, is still under a theater of war, so to speak. The military has been deployed to the Northeast, Yobe inclusive. There are questions as to how, first and foremost, we could have allowed schools uh, to be unprotected. How come it is that these people were able to come in for hours, take these girls, and then take them out. In some instances, we heard that their vehicles broke down and that you know, people had to help them. And there was no security knowledge of what was going on at that time. Yeah, this those is, questions, this is those questions, yeah. AI's the, allegations. The questions, they are being asked because um, people don't know the landmarks that we have in the Northeast. And also, the number of um, troops that are deployed in that place. So you can, if you are in Abuja or any part of the south, you can easily, f uh, what happened? If somebody is in Guagulada, somebody is in, in uh, uh, any of the town within, how long will it take the military to come? But the, the landmass is very large, and <clears throat> where the, the military was deployed, uh, in Dabchi, they were taken away they were redeployed for, for other assignments. And so it is possible that the, 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 see, the, the Boko Haram can operate in a, in a place for 
a long time without the military presence until they get the information to that General, place. I want to just ask you, you know, when you assess the entire situation and you understand the People's Democratic Party has come out publicly to allege that uh, your services, uh, the Nigerian military, are playing out the political script of the All Progressives Congress, that this was staged, that five girls were, uh, that, you know, all of these girls were taken, five girls were killed in the process, all of this was uh, orchestrated uh, for them to bring, uh, be brought back so that it would be a political victory for the president in comparison to what happened in Chibok in 2014. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, and is there any veracity to it? No, that is what we want, to, we want Nigeria to understand. This is not the issue of APC or PDP. Now, we, we have this kind of situation when APC was in opposition and the uh, two boy girls uh, were adopted. But the, 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 the general picture is that with what amnesty has been um, bringing out their report, and we have our very senior polit politician emphasizing accepting the report. It has a kind of um, um, uh, boomerang effect on the country and in the military. For instance, what happened in, um, in 2014, the report that Messi were writing had serious implication in our military operation. They wrote about how the military um, uh, were not protecting the citizens, were violating human rights. And that made the, the United States of America government to invoke uh, Lehi law, where the, the United States of America were not supposed to sell weapons to Nigeria, and the, uh, nobody will carry weapons to Nigeria through their airspace or through their waterways. And that time, it was so difficult for us to uh, combat Boko Haram. So, General, you're saying there's a, there's, they are openly jeopardizing your operations. That is what I'm saying. I want to be very clear here. Uh, when, when we hear some of the commentary coming out in public about some of these operations, whether it be successful or whether it be failed, uh, what is the cumulative impact ultimately on the capacity of your, of your uh, armed forces and also on the morale of your armed forces? That is, see, when, when these people are, we are paying with our lives in fighting in the, in the Northeast. Now, when we are about, we, when we are making successes, Amnesty International will come out and say we have been killing civilians. And when you are not there, you, you, and you are from the North, you will think that what they are saying is true. And you, you see the, the, the conversation from our politicians, from our citizens, is so demoralizing. Now, the impact on the international community is that Amnesty is a very credible organization out there. But in Nigeria, they are not. I resume as the acting director of defense information on the 8th of January. There was a report that came out in January about the military operation. Nobody asked questions. Uh, we didn't talk to our security agency. We didn't talk to our commander, our service chief. Even that report was not sent to the military. I got it from a reporter. The same thing in February. I got the report in February from the, the, the managing director of authority newspaper. He called me and said I should comment on Amnesty International. I said, I have not seen anything. He said, okay, I should send my email address. He forwarded it to me. The one of this week, the BBC reporter, Stephanie, based in Lagos, he called me and said, I have not seen it. He sent it to my, to my email. Now, the question is, if you are going to condemn an organization that they are not doing well, and you don't make any effort for them to answer some queries from you, which, even though it may not change your narrative, why don't you make any attempt to talk to them? <laughs>